only got three quarters, I think, of the No Way Home. That's the problem. The problem is they got a $2 billion hit. So like they got a reserve right now. They can lose money on like five projects before they concern. What up everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host Pablo and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, uh, out of nowhere, seemingly, these guys just can't stop. They just can't stop. They have to... As much as they possibly can, Brian, squeeze that juice. Spider-Man Noir. In a deal, I think, with Amazon, correct, Brian? Is it, is it a series? Oh, yeah. No, this is, oh, yeah. This is the Amazon Sony. This is it, man. It's like, was it in, the, in that in that that atrocious Mortal Kombat movie from back in the day? It has begun. And it's just gonna we got Silk coming out. We got Spider we got this Craven the Hunter movie. That's coming out now. We got Spider-Man Noir that they want to do. Brian, do you care? Do people care? I mean, I, people were, you know, obviously they have to do what they got to do and, and and announce it to their groups and the and their community. But do you give a damn about Spider-Man Noir, Brian? It could possibly be something, you know, they have to do something different, and this is different. I don't know, Brian. What do you what do you, what do you, what do you make of all, all of this? Well, they told us they own the rights to more than nine hundred characters. So <laughs> we on our way. Um, but as oh, you know, man. but as as I said the last time, they really own the right. They really own the rights to one, which is Spider Man. So as you say, they are gonna just <laughs> squeeze the life out of this out of this character to where I think people. I mean. You know, I think Across the Spider-Verse is going to be quite entertaining. I mean, I trust those guys at this point to give you something that is going to look good and be interesting. But I don't think you will leave that film saying, I need to have individual series and projects about every one of the iterations of Spider-Man that pop up. To me, this series is the classic case of the you know, law of diminishing marginal returns. You know, because in, in Into the Spider-Verse, Spider-Man Noir was a scene stealer. Yeah. But that's what he was. He's a, he's a cameo character who was cool for like three minutes. Yeah. You're going to build 10 episodes around this guy to make it like a, you know, it, it almost reminded me of a weird way of like, you know how like in an in original Star Trek, because they didn't really have the special effects or the technology to really go to space, they would like wind up on these planets that effectively were like windows into Earth's past. So like one of them, they're like, Al Capone's mobsters, another one they're like in ancient Rome. Like that's what this reminds me of. It's like you just you just kind of pulling the wool over people's eyes and trying to distract them from the fact that like we only really care about like true Spider-Man mythology. And like I don't need this much content about all these satellite characters who got a little shine in a project somewhere here and there. So no, I do not care. I don't think this is going to be successful. And I think the more of these they I think the more of these they crank out in a shorter span of time, the quicker this thing is going to die on the vine. So maybe we should root for it because maybe we should root for it to go away. But I mean, that's the hope. Think- I've been I've been saying this for a long time that people are going to have enough and they're going to want Sony to give back the rights to Spider-Man because all they're doing is, like I said in the beginning, they're squeezing the juice out of this to get as much money and, and, and much people talking about Sony as possibly they can. And with that, unfortunately, we're going to get bad product. Hopefully, Brian, let's see what happens with Craven the Hunter. If this, if that is a flop, Brian, if it turns out to be horrendous, uh, goodbye, James Bond. (laughs) And hopefully goodbye, you know, uh, Spider-Man in the Sony universe because it just can't continue. It just bad movies from this world cannot continue, and I don't, and I just can't. I, I don't understand Venom, the Venom series. I just don't. Venom one, yes, but I don't. I, I don't know. Pa- Pablo's refusal to reference Madam Web, by the way, is telling. Oh me my God, <laughs> <laughs> that's not even in my existence, yo. When I think about movies that and I'm looking forward to seeing or that are coming out. If that movie is good and makes money, like I will, 
I will have to reconsider my like assessment of this entire genre and what's possible. I think the fact that that's like a summer film and like they're, they're putting it out like it's a kind of a surefire thing. And I'm just like staring at it like this has a hundred million dollar loss written all over it. Um, but yeah, no, I think that the real shame of it too is when you do stuff like this, we know that somewhere out there, another Tom Holland true Spider-Man project is going to happen. We yeah. heard that he signed. To me, the real fear is that you you do so much damage in the periphery that when that project comes, we are no longer able to get as excited about that as we should because Man. we're just like, we're spider man out. We're bad spider man out. So when good Spider-Man shows up, like we're just sort of like, eh. And I think the flip side of that is if they, the second, the other thing I think is interesting, the second they announced that project, they're like, okay, Spider-Man 4, here's what we're doing. Here's what we got. Are people going to watch the other stuff leading up to that? Why wouldn't they just wait and be like, look, I'm just going to wait, <laughs> save my time and save my dollars for actual Peter Parker Spider-Man. That's what I want to pay to go see. Yeah, uh, but we're going to have to just live with it as long as Sony makes a profit. And I'm talking about as, as long as Sony makes, you know, anything near over if they're in the black. Good to go. Sony got three quarters, I think, of the No Way Home. That's the problem. The problem is they got a $2 billion hit. So, like, they got a reserve right now. They can lose money on, like, five projects before they concern. That's the real problem in all yeah. this. Like, yeah. that's the, they're look, see, like, Marvel, and, and honestly, I think now DC, like, they're looking at it as, like, we want the hit rate to be pretty high. Sony's looking at it as, we just need to hit, well, it's like modern baseball. We can hit 188 as long as we hit a home run every every couple of games. We good. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> Unfortunately, we're going to have to deal with it unless, again, the opposition towards going to see a Spider-Man released Sony project has to be so huge that Sony has to reconsider. Yeah. The other problem is Amazon is the distribution partner because we've seen like with Jupiter's legacy, Netflix has a quick hook for stuff yeah. that doesn't land. Yeah. I'm not convinced Amazon's the same way. I think because they're trying to build this established IP, their leash is going to be longer for projects that are not hits because they think that there's a halo effect of like, if we can get some Spider-Man stuff on our platform, that's going to help us in the long run. If we can get some DC stuff. So I'm not as convinced if it's a bad, if Spider-Man Noir is a lackluster, mediocre first season, I'm not as convinced that like they would cancel it. Yeah. Speaking of uh, bad ideas, Constantine. <laughs> At one point, we thought this was being discarded. And now it seems like it's still in development. That they still want to do it. Brian, you've already heard my comments on, on, on this possibility. Keanu needs to leave this alone. They need to move on. James Gunn has to really rethink this and not give in to people's demands. Cause I don't know if this is Keanu wanting to do it or WB really wanting him to do it. Although the first Constantine, I don't think it did well in the box office, right, Brian? But it definitely had some fans that, that really enjoyed the film. I think it, it, it got us. It's one of those, like it got a second life on TV. There's a reason yeah. that like there was a period where Constantine was a, on a lot. Like it was on TNT a lot. It was on like HBO a lot because people did watch it after the fact. And that's mm -hmm. what kind of was like the spark for maybe this could happen. And I, and I, to your answer, your question, yes, Keanu has wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. And as he became, I think a bigger and bigger star with sort of John wick uh, some of his personal, you know, exploits and then sort of like some of his cameos, I think his clout to try to get this done probably increased to where he finally got a green light, it seemed like, before Gunn and Saffron took over. I'm not convinced it's going to happen. We saw conflicting reports, one that said it was dead, another said that it was still alive. I guess for me, this project is in the same category as the J.J. Abrams, Ta-Nehisi Coates, Superman. There's like projects that they don't have to formally say are dead 
because there's nothing actually really happening right now. They're not paying bills for these things to get made. So why I say it's dead, just leave the hope out there and eventually it kind of like dies on the vine or they just don't get it done. But I, I struggle to see this as being a must do Elseworlds project. I think you'd have a better shot, honestly, of a completely rebooted Constantine as a, if you, cause you you reference Swamp Thing as a path to Justice League Dark. So if you then rebooted a younger John Constantine as consistent with the horror monster genre, I think you'd have a better justification for that than you would of running it back yeah. with Keanu and Francis Lawrence for, for a sequel. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Uh, I, I think Tracy is all for it because he loved. I, I think the the first. The movie's not bad. I think it. I think I gotta watch it again. Remember, it's like better than people remember, but it's not like I don't know. It, I don't think it leaves you clamoring for a trilogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this possibility of Keanu Reeves doing coming back again. If he does come back, you gotta get a new haircut. I'm sorry. You just gotta look different. You can't look the same for every movie. I'm sorry. So, I mean, and there's also talks of him, you know, although we certainly think this is not going to happen, but there's been talks of him possibly uh, being put up to do a uh, Ghost Rider. Uh, but again, he needs to chill out and decide what he wants to do. And if he's going to do it, just look different. Don't look the same. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> <laughs>